are back with three startups ready to present their five-minute pitch to the jury. And again, after that, five minutes of time for the jury for their Q&A. So far, we've seen high-quality pitches, and it's very entertaining to watch. So jury and startup teams, get ready. First up is Imagines, an AI-powered platform helps vascular surgeons deliver personalized medicine. By applying AI and biomechanical modeling to MRIs, their algorithms measure patients' vascular stiffness, hemodynamics, and anatomy. Please welcome to our screen, Ted Baldwin. Good luck. Hi, everybody. My name is Ted Baldwin, and thanks so much for being here. Um, I'm going to start out this presentation with a number, 55 millimeters. 55 millimeters is the difference between life and death for orthic aneurysm patients. Today, orthic aneurysms can be a deadly disease, but if we operate you in advance, we can save you. And if your diameter of your aorta is above 55 millimeters, we give you the operation. And if, we, if you're under, we don't. And this has a dramatic impact on patients. Take the example of Mrs. S. Mrs. S is a 58-year-old woman, which over seven years, we followed her every single year and measured her aorta under 55 millimeters, under 55 millimeters, under 55 millimeters. And yet, unfortunately, in 2013, Mrs. S deceased of an aortic dissection. And to the surprise of everybody, because this was not supposed to happen, yet up to 50% of aortic ruptures occur under the recommended threshold. So something needs to be done for these patients because they're dying and we're not taking the decision on the right information. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. Today and in the last few years, we've made tremendous advances in terms of imaging technologies. And today we can really see in the insides of the aorta. But still, more data, what do we do with it? There is a really a big question for vascular surgeons that see this. What, do I, what can I do? I can maybe get some numbers, but how can I decide whether or not to operate Mrs. S? That is the massive question. And we at Imagines are here to solve that problem. We're bringing software that takes this 40 flow data and applies image processing and machine learning to help vascular surgeons make better decisions for patients like Mrs. S for three main uh, indications, which include aortic aneurysms that represents a very large market of $9 billion. Um, we, our first product um, that we've been moving onto the market um, is uh, measures these exact types of imaging biomarkers. And it's been developed uh, in the large MESA trial that's followed over 4,000 patients over 10 years large amount of clinical uh, validation. To date, we've also had success in the research market with over 80 publications to date and 20 leader centers using this technology. And we've shown that actually these markers individually have the ability to be predictors of major cardiovascular events. But we want to go a little bit further than this. We want to apply these, these imaging biomarkers and help vascular surgeons make the right decision. So we're working to, to create a new patient pathway that is based on the fast aortic MRI acquisitions with 40 flow data with actors such as Siemens and GE and applying our software that does the analysis in order to risk stratify these patients and make the right decisions for Mrs. S. And we have two major partnerships going for us in order to deliver on this mission. The first one is with Siemens Health and Ears in the context of the Business Plan 2021 EIT. We're running a very large clinical program with the five largest aortic centers in Europe in order to show that with medical economic evidence that our solution is actually able to improve clinical decisions um, for patients like Mrs. S and also in a cost-effective way because this is, it has a dramatic impact actually being able to doing elective surgeries rather than, um, than emergency surgeries. And this will drive our business model, which is based off of reimbursement, which is significantly different from our competitors, which don't have dedicated reimbursement and therefore will have an edge with hospitals because we're gonna be a source of revenue versus cost of our competitors. And second off, I'm super happy to announce, we've just in the last week actually signed an agreement with APHP, which is the largest hospital group in, in, in Europe in order to leverage their, to clean their data and leverage their data to enrich our algorithms and make even better decisions for patients like Mrs. S. So we have an ambitious roadmap. Today we have our first product, which is, which is applied to the research market. And next year we're applying for a 510K um, FDA approval, which will then be further um, uh, increased with 
uh, a further uh, uh, application for 40 flow data as of 2022. As of next year, we're also going to be aiming to build our business model on existing reimbursement codes that especially exist in, in the US and in, in Germany. And as of 2024, we uh, aim to launch the full orthic decision support tool with the medical economic data um, and leverage and go for this dedicated reimbursement model. We have a very complementary team with a lot of uh, um, with business, medical and, and technical talent. And I want to conclude this, com this presentation by saying we have, a we have a very challenging problem that's impacting a ton of patients in Europe and a great team to achieve this goal. So thank you so much for listening to this presentation. And that was five minutes. Well done, the team from I I Imogenes. Now let's move to our jury. I think it's Sophie has a question. So go ahead. And your microphone is muted, so make sure that they're turned on. And then go Sorry, to yeah, members. thank you, I noticed. Thank you, uh, thank you for your presentation. I was really impressed by the combination of biomarkers and uh, artificial intelligence, and also uh, what you've reached until now. But very practically, when does the patient enter uh, the process? When does the patient enter the process? Yes. So typically these patients are, uh, they're followed up every single year when they're diagnosed with uh, under the surgical threshold. And then what we're gonna be applying is this fast MRI for these patients and every single time they're analyzed. So essentially we're building onto a patient pl uh, pathway that already exists and adding additional biomarkers. And with the data that we're conglomerating, so combining the biomarkers with machine learning, we're able to provide uh, an, an enhanced solution for better basically surgical decisions. Uh, yeah. But as you discussed with the example of this lady, yeah. uh, you, I, I get the impression the decision, the, the value of the decision is about, uh, as a doctor, am I going to operate this lady or not? Uh, have a regular surgery or not? Or uh, a fast... Uh, um, so we are talking about patients that are already um, monitored by the doctor, not just as a way of, uh, okay, I might have a problem and this is not yet indicated. Yes, so the, the, these patients are regularly screened with ultrasound initially. Uh, this is a common thing that is done uh, in, in routine. And once you actually have the initial screening, then you would go for more in-depth imaging okay. in order to confirm yeah. this and in order to follow them up. And then once you have, you're in a sort of intermediate risk zone, you will be continuously doing the imaging year on year. So yeah. we're, All right. that. And we're going to switch to Edith, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So I have a question. Do you integrate the system in the hospital system? And what is the cost of implementation with regard to you know, time, that time that they need to put in order to be able to actually use your offering? Yes. So to answer the second question first, in terms of time, this is fully, we make it as automatic as possible. Um, so really we minimize the number of clicks for them. For, with our current biomarkers, we're at uh, five clicks uh, maximum in order to do this, which is better than our competitors. Uh, and we truly try to truly try to uh, streamline the process. And this is one of the reasons in terms, I didn't talk about distribution strategy, but our distribution strategy is to work with established uh, channels that are already existing in the hospital, it being um, basically so, uh, market software marketplaces that are distributed by, for instance, Siemens, GE, but there's also third party vendors such as Arteris, uh, Ozimis, I think there's maybe 15 on the market. And our, our ambition is not to distribute this software on our own as an independent software, it's to be able to plug it into this existing workflow. And what we're bringing is the, the clinical recommendation and the and also okay. the work with the payers in order to get it reimbursed. Okay, I get it, thank you. And then let's move on to Robert. Hi, Ted. You're clearly very focused on reimbursement, which I think is critical, and you describe the benefit of your system over other systems in terms of how it gets paid for. Could you provide a little bit more uh, detail about that and um, uh, how you therefore th how you think that would expand into other countries? Absolutely. So the reason, so the the business model that we're following is maybe if you're familiar with this company called Heartflow. Heartflow is a company that's been working in coronary diseases, also in cardiovascular, and has enabled and has been one of the first pioneers 
to be able to get a digital biomarker reimbursed in the US, in the UK, and in Germany, and now it's coming into France. Um, and so we want to follow those steps. So that's why essentially we've, we've designed specifically this clinical trial in, with Siemens in these five uh, leading hospitals in Europe in order to build the medical economic data that is necessary for this reimbursement. So we're thinking about this product, uh, bringing it to market just as it would, we would do a, with a medical device rather than a software solution that would be sold as a SaaS within uh, the, the, the budget, uh, the medical equipment uh, budget of a hospital. So we're thinking about it in a very, in a much more medical device way, rather than I would say a digital way. Okay. At what level of reimbursement do you anticipate? We, 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 so uh, we anticipate to get uh, CPT codes in the US um, and uh, essentially fee for service uh, codes uh, in the other markets. And we, we have to conclude the Q&A with that. We're already at five minutes. Um, of course, and that goes for everyone. If you have questions about this particular startup, uh, do you want to meet the founders? Uh, you can go to our networking platform to schedule a meeting. Well done. That was the team from Imagines, and they're focusing on unexpected aortic ruptures, which unfortunately happens too much, even when patients are monitored. Now, the jury is scoring this pitch, and in the meantime, we're moving on to our next presenter. Living Brain combines immersive VR, psychological learning strategies, and activities of living da daily living for delivering a functional gamified rehabilitation. Presenting for Living Brain is Julian Specht. Welcome. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Neurological diseases. Imagine you're a sufferer, a stroke, a brain tumor, epilepsy. You may need surgery. Surgery may leave you with poor cognition. Maybe you can't cook, can't go back to work, can't even make a cup of coffee. You know you have a cup and water and coffee. You just don't know what to do with them. You can relearn this but the next few months are crucial. At this moment, brain rehab is easiest and most effective. So you work with a therapist, you make coffee again and again and again. But every patient needs a therapist and therapy takes time. Boiling water is dangerous. So often, this is what the hospital gives you, a paper and pencil test. How will that help you learn to make coffee or cook eggs or do your shopping? But some hospitals have gone high tech. They give you the same test, but on a PC. This is not therapy. It is just a test, but it is mostly all there is. Eventually, you're well enough to go home. This is the moment you need the most support. Help here will boost your rehab massively, but what you get is nothing. Instead of improving, you get worse. This makes rehab much, much slower, more frustrating and more costly, makes it less successful. So you may never fully recover. So we asked ourselves, can we do better? We think we can. Instead of memorizing numbers with paper and pencil, we use this. In our virtual kitchen, you relearn the steps to make coffee. We motivate you to practice until it's second nature. So how do we do it? Well, some real startups talk about psychology, some about neuroscience, some about gamification, and some about technology. We are different. We combine them all. So you get practice, not tests. Practice in the things you need for life. Effectiveness in restructuring the brain. Our enablers are overstimulation and neuroplasticity. But will you pay for it? Probably not. So who else? We are targeting therapists. At the moment, they spend most of their time dealing with this. With us, they get this. We automatically do the paperwork so they don't have to. No paperwork equals less time, equals less costs. But that's not all. 
our software sends training data to the cloud. We process it and send it to the therapist. They get the right data at the right time to give you the right treatment. How will they buy it? Well, we sell licenses to therapists, offices, and hospitals. So where is all the money we've made? Well, we're nearly there. We're pre-revenue. But the 400K funding we've received has helped us with development. We've got a partnership with pharma giant Merck, and our first clinical trial was with Asclepios. Now we're working together on our second. They have 75 hospitals and more to come in Germany alone. Merck and Asclepios believe in us, and they're not alone. This is our young team, but of course, we have got wise old hats to support us. Living Brain is rehab with science and tech the practical way. We are looking for 1 million euros to become the leading company in virtual reality rehabilitation. And this is why I'm standing here. This is my brain scan. This is why our whole team is working so hard. I myself was a patient in 2015. I underwent neurosurgery. I know how it feels when a doctor tells you, we don't know how we could help you getting back to life. And this has to end. Thank you very much. Julian, well done. Thank you so much for your pitch. And I see that Edith has a question. Go ahead. Yes, thank you very much for the presentation. And um, you will be targeting Therapist, and my question is, uh, which markets will you actually focus on? So in which markets do you see the highest needs for this kind of um, um, so digitalization and how, how, how this compares and differentiate to all apps that are out there trying to do more or less the same? Yes. So you mean the markets in terms of a country? Of country, or? yes. Yes. Okay. So um, we are focusing on starting here in Germany. And um, we see that the legislation in Germany is changing right now and is quite open for digital solutions, in particular for apps like this. And um, we see that we compete uh, for sure with applications that are already out there, but mostly they are not using VR. And the solutions that are out there are proven um, not effective or not as effective as they need to be for um, having that kind of change in the brain. And so we are competing with them and we're starting with Germany and going then further along into Europe. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on the jury panel has a question for Julian about living brain? Antonio. Yes, I do. Precisely elaborating on what you just said, which is very relevant. There is, this is a crowded space, but I, actually I, I believe in what you said, you, you, your solution seems to be spot on. Do you have uh, an, a study uh, that is independent, that compares the existing solutions with your own solution? Are you planning to have it? What's the status of demonstration of your clear advantage over the existing solutions? Yes, that's quite a good question. So our first trial was to prove that the technology and the um, estimated group of patients is working. And the, uh, the study we have just started um, is comparing the standard therapy so this is computer-based uh, brain training with our therapy over um, a, longer term, a longer time so that we can see on a psychological level um, how the brain changes and how the performance of the patient changes because I want to be able to say that this is a proven that the therapy that we deliver um, is superior to the one that is out there at the moment. So yes, it is in the conduction. Are, are you medical device class 2A or 2B? Excuse me? Are you a medical device class 2A or 2B? Uh, we become a medical um, device class 2A. Now we go to Sophie and after that to Oliver. So Sophie, go ahead. Yes, I would like to ask what's the price of the product? So we are still in the process of figuring that out. And as we are not in the market yet, um, we try to find out with the therapists, with the hospitals and uh, the insurers what the best price um, will be as the product can be fit into the market. So we are not there yet. Okay, oh, and oh, oh, go ahead, additional question. In what kind of business model are you thinking about a license agreement or, or because maybe I missed it, huh? but... Uh... Yes, 
that's no problem. Um, we are seeking to sell licenses to rehabilitation hospitals and therapist offices. So we are not targeting the patient yeah. themselves because rehab mostly takes place um, in those offices and clinics. Okay, thank you. And then on to Oliver. Mm -hmm. I'm just um, curious about the level of customization of your solution. So is this one size fits all to start with or are some elements in there that are customized to the patient in the, the situation he or she is in? So this is um, one thing where we need the further investment because at the moment we have our scenarios that we have developed and you can customize it in terms of difficulty for the patient and on cognition. Um, but in the next step, our solution would be for surely asked um, to have that high level of customization um, and to also fit in databases and with the data, we can customize it more for the patient. So we have that in mind, um, but we are not there yet because we know that this high level of customization is necessary for a successful rehabilitation of the patient. Absolutely. Thank you. We still have a little bit of time left. Let's see if anyone else on the jury panel has a question. Stay silent. I think a short question if we have time. Can, can you tell more about the relationship with Merck? What is the is the collaboration about? So uh, we were part of their accelerator program in 2017. And since then, we are in close touch with them. Um, and for sure, the further collaboration will work out then. All right. And that is perfect. Also at five minutes for the Q&A with the jury. Well done, Julian. And that was the team from Living Brain who are trying to improve rehabilitation for patients after surgery, for instance. Patient and therapists can work together even after they leave the hospital using VR and other solutions that are already in the market to help improve their lives. The jury is scoring the pitch and we're moving on to the next one. Methinks Vision wants to provide universal and timely diagnosis to life-saving treatments worldwide. The team has developed AI medical imaging software capable to triage strokes, reducing the time to treatment to under an hour, and by doing so, saving thousands of lives. Please welcome Paul Rodriguez. Good luck. Hello, uh, good morning, everyone. In this picture, you can see a patient that is suffering a stroke. And for those of you who know somebody who suffered a stroke, you will know that time is brain. One hour delay in time to treatment can make a patient severely disabled forever. But how does the workflow of the hospital actually work? When a patient reaches a hospital, they do a neurological exploration and an contrast CT to discard that there is an hemorrhage. But then they need contrast medical imaging to see if there is a clot and how damaged is the brain. Unfortunately, more than 50% of the hospitals worldwide don't have access to contrast medical imaging and those who have could save uh, time to treatment that could have a huge impact in patients' outcomes. Our software is capable to bypass the need of advanced medical imaging, reducing time to treatment, and saving, in some cases, more than an hour. Our vision is to provide universal and timely diagnosis to enable life-saving treatments worldwide. But how does a technology actually work? If you see the picture in the left side, this is a contrast medical imaging. So here it's very easy to see the vascularity of the brain. And you can say that there is a clot because actually the contrast doesn't flow in all the vessel. In the right hand picture, you see an uncontrast image, which is much more blurry and difficult for radiologists to see. And here our software has detected where is the clot and which is the affected area of the brain. And which is the way we do it? It's the same way you can say that there is a fire. You can do so by actually seeing the fire, but also because you can see the smoke. Competitors are actually focused on contrast solution. And why is that? Because they don't really need to change the workflow and the quality of the image is higher so they can achieve a higher accuracy. Some of our competitors are focused in non-contrast imaging but they struggle to have the levels of accuracy that allows them to disrupt the workflow. What we've proved recently in a very ambitious paper is our capability to have the required levels of accuracy. And compared to competitors, we have a larger data set, higher accuracy, and we're able to detect a wider range of clots. 
Also, we recently won the gold medal at the Emirates Detection Competition of the Radiological Society of North America. But what is critical in our software is that we've been able to prove in research purposes in a major hospital in Spain. And we have a large amount of hospitals across Europe and US that are now onboarding in a larger pilot. We also received a letter of interest and even a grant from a leading medical devices and medical imaging companies. But what is crucial to all of us, reimbursement. This AI has opened the pathway for all of us. They recently obtained the new technology add-on payment from the CMS for contrast solution. Imagine the impact we will have with non-contrast technology. And regarding the go-to-market, we're focused in Europe and then in US with reimbursement. But what has been astonishing is the huge interest from competitors to actually license the technology and reduce the time to market. Because this is not a matter of a person who is suffering. This has an impact, our technology, in thousands of people in, 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 in reducing disabilities and lives, but also overcoming the burden for families that suppose having a stroke for many years. We recently rose 1.8 million to conclude the regulatory process and have a market ready product by early 2022. And we will soon raise additional 5 million for commercialization. Our team has an extensive track record in, in developing software, in clinical strategy and healthcare ventures. And also our specific core team is really focused in reducing the time to market and have a product that is truly impressive and impactful as soon as is possible. To sum up, there are four things that are crucial for a company such as ours. We identified a clear medical need. We have a strong commercial interest and a reimbursement strategy. We have a unique technology proven and validated. But what's more important, we have the right team to make it happen. Thank you very much. Well done, Pau, on your pitch. Let's move over to the jury. Who wants to kick things off? I see Roma is raising her hand. So let's go to Roma first. Hi, hello. So thank you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for your pitch. Uh, Pau, uh, could you sort of uh, explain a little bit or more, uh, a little bit more in detail? I, I imagine that five minutes is not enough uh, of, of time in terms of your sort of market validation part, you know, with all the all the players in ecosystem. Okay, so the key thing here is that it's not our validation. We did a paper at the American Heart Association that did uh, that around the, around the world. So this is something that is peer reviewed and very validated. Then working real time at Bay de Bron in the hospital is impressive because we see real time the levels of accuracy that we achieve and the clinicians that overview that, they, they really see that, that there is an impact and, and, and that's, that's impressive. Um, and then regarding the, the medical devices companies, we, we received a grant to further develop this technology and they, they really need to see that we go through the regulatory process and we're working very hard to do that when we have the strategy in place. So, so that is what you have to do, regulatory and, and, and push there. Over to you. It is then. Yeah, so my, my question is mainly about the impact on patients. My understanding is that usually um, for the detecting clots, the main challenge is time, okay? Time to detect. So I just want to understand in this case, is the impact mainly for the care givers that now can use a better and more accurate method or for the patients and saving lives? So the impact is clearly for patients. I mean, there is a, it has been proved a clear correlation between time and outcomes. This is dramatic. So if you save 30 minutes, an hour, 10 minutes, this can have a huge impact. And this is proved. It's all, it also has an impact for healthcare systems because they don't need to do additional uh, CTs or they don't need the toxicology of contrast. But that is minor compared to the huge impact in time reduction. So it's time of detection. Time I mean, of time detection. of time analyzing, time of time, analyzing. Time the, to treatment will be is the time where you can perform the treatment, the endovascular treatment in particular. Okay. And then on to Antonio. 
congratulations, Paul, for a great idea. Um, I would like to, you to elaborate a little bit more on the tech that you use to get it done, because you didn't touch upon that, and I would like to know a bit more about that. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. So, okay, going on this specific tech, right? So the, the key thing here is that we combine imaging with neurological exploration. We put this together. And this is important because in reality is the way it's working. So you, you cannot forget about the clinical exploration and we mix these two things. Then we combine classification with segmentation and both things are very important. But now we've used a cutting edge technology because we're actually pre-training with 2D DICOMs and we use transformers to actually leverage in the 3D because, because you can have in between, you can have a clot. And just a last thing, just there are many things I could discuss, but we have access to thin slides because with the thin slides of the CT, you can see actually where is the clot and the AA can absorb that. Understood, got you. And Thank then you. over to Oliver. Mm -hmm. Uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on the reimbursement scheme? I mean, you quickly touched upon it, but uh, could you uh, tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, absolutely. So, so here, most of the of these softwares, it's clear that if you save time, there is a willingness to pay for uh, healthcare economics. Okay, Biz AI, which are a great, which are a great company, they've achieved this this grant from the CMS in which. They, they, they pay up to a thousand euros per diagnosis. So BZI have shown with contrast that there is a value and this is capped to 25K, okay? So there is a price per diagnosis in the US today. So what we're doing, what we want to go through is to say, okay, if they do that with contrast, if we do it with an uncontrast, this is the holy grail. Mm -hmm. This is our, our, our focus. Then obviously we will work in health economic uh, analysis. We will, we will have an impact. We will validate it in trials, but, but we really have to go through the regulatory and then work on proving the impact. Mm -hmm. Final yeah. remarks very quickly. Robert, last one. So are you going to need a new reimbursement code or are you going to be able to come in under existing codes? Most probably we will do the, the, the existing, this add-on payment. But again, uh, what is clear is that we have to go through the regulatory. This is clear. Then we see the impact and we'll see which has, is the best way. It's obvious that uh, our competitors have done the pathway. So we will, we will follow this, this great job that they've done and, and, and do that. And that also rounds up our five minutes. Well done. Thank you for the teams pitching in this round. And that, of course, was me things. And they're working on a solution to make it easier to assess strokes, because in many locations, they do not have the right solutions to do that with advanced imaging technologies. So thank you for that pitch as well.